Hello everyone, this is Veos, and welcome back to another video. This is going to have to be a quick late night Sunday video. Uh, uh, <clears throat> didn't have a whole lot of time to make a video today, but uh, uh, real quick, uh, the uh, Duna Colony video is coming out tomorrow, uh, around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, so look forward to that. Um, this was just basically about an hour and a half of mm, fucking around in KSP. Uh, I was sort of inspired by the Star Wars AT, was it AT-AT, at t at and t I don't know, <laughs> you know, the giant four-legged walker. Anyway, uh, because I, I looked at the legs and the legs were so simple, I'm like, you know, I could probably do something very, very similar to that. And I ended up making something that was similar, but not exactly... Uh, not exactly the same. It, of course, you know, this is KSP, so you, you work with what you got. Anywho, um, it can walk, and you can control it to go left and right. Uh, but that's about it <laughs> at this point in research and development. And it's, uh, it was actually really fun, uh, starting off with the absolute prototype, and then working my way all the way up to, uh, what I eventually ended up with basic rundown was that the the first prototype was more like a hopper i was just trying to understand the physics between the whole motors motor relations between the legs and everything and how i could try to make it kind of hop across uh, and that of course led to the second prototype which was uh like a um a quad quadpedal is that what you call it i don't know four legs and i try, try I was trying to figure out how to make that work and once I figured out how to make that work then it was more like just testing out the feet and seeing what works and what kind of feet I can use and I tried to use the grip pads and it was like the grip pads were actually hindering the success of the prototype the third prototype it would grab a hold of the ground so that it was, it was almost like having duct tape on the bottom of your feet so uh, after a while, it was it was more or less uh, ruining the the rhythm and the pattern of the of the walking um, of of the walking mechanism, which was kind of interesting. When I took the pads off, it worked just fine. So, and then finally, the fourth the fourth prototype is with the cockpit and the and the <laughs> and the wow, that's that's really out of control, isn't it? I was still trying to figure out how to. How to do the whole feet thing there is <laughs> just flapping around like a fish out of water you're gonna see a lot of that in the first and second prototype you'll also notice me putting the uh, legs on individually one by one instead of doing mirror uh like a mirror uh attachment and that's because of the fact that ksp robotics is notorious for fucking up really bad when you do it in like a mirror attachment or radial attachment so, um, I'm, me having played this game for for a very long time, it's it's just easier to put them on one at a time because then you don't have to worry about anything like that happening, where the computer I don't know loads it up wrong or something, and completely deletes all your settings for your legs when you put it on using mirror attachment or, or radial attachment. So, avoiding that, I just go ahead and put one on at a time. But like I said, in the fourth prototype, it, it works, it can turn left, it can turn right, and it can walk, but after a while it does start to lose that consistency between the, between the legs, that timing between the legs, and I think that's just KSP being KSP. Uh, it's probably a factor of uh, the fact that the, the motors aren't absolute, they are prone to being slowed down or, or pushed or halted very slightly because of the weight of the vehicle. So they'll lose timing after a while and you'll have to reset it somehow. Uh, the way I resetted it was I eventually made it so that one key turned on all the motors. And once all the motors were activated, there's a second key that toggled the brakes between the uh, front left and back right foot 
so that uh, those feet can be controlled separately once I activate the power for all of them. And what that did was it allowed the, the first set of feet to move the vehicle up in the sky while I release the brakes and then the second pair of feet could move in tandem with the other two allowing it to do a walking type of motion. So that was the secret behind that success. But like I said before, it's it comes down to KSP and its physics and the fact that the motors themselves uh, fall out of timing sync after a while because of whatever the case may be. So it was a fun little thing to do, but I don't see this having any practical real thing unless it was like a swamp ground you know like somewhere where tracked vehicles couldn't move across and maybe the area was always foggy all the time so aerial vehicles would be a bad idea as well and so they would elect for tall walking vehicles that could walk over the swamp from one place to another i mean that that could be it that could be a thing so Anyway, all right, well, that's me. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of this video. It's just a raw cut sped up uh, five times uh, for you know turn to turn an hour and a half into about 17 minutes. So have fun watching that. Hope you I hope it helps you out. You know, if you were trying to learn anything or if you just you know, we're curious about what I was up to. So there you go. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.
Thank you.